What's good, guys? It's Sleep Ant bringing you another Pokemon Sword and Shield update. Now, with this update, we didn't get we didn't get that much. We didn't get that. What, what we did get though, pretty nice. But uh, in my opinion, we really didn't get all that much. Certainly not as much as like last time, or a full fledged direct or anything. But it was what we got was pretty was pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and discuss every bit of stuff we just got. Now, no doubt, the biggest information we have gotten so far in the in right there was Galarian Farm Pokemon. Now, this is very similar to Alolan Farms, but as you could probably guess by looking at Zigzagoon and Linoon, they're not Kanto exclusive anymore. So this this basically opens up like all types of new possibilities. We we don't know what type of Galarian foreign Pokemon we can get as opposed to Alolans we're only gonna get Kanto so that that right off the bat makes me very happy extremely happy we, we don't gotta worry about just Kanto but as you can see we got Weezen we got Zigzagoon and we got Lightning so I'm gonna hop into Weezen first look at this thing just just look at just look at it I, I cannot love the design of this thing more that hat that that, that hat just takes the cake for me all right so this is Galarian Weezen. It is part fairy. It's poison, but it's part fairy. And it has levitate, so that is a really, really, that is a very good type combination. This thing, it's weak to psychic, yeah. Levitate, so it doesn't hurt by ground. Poison offsets the uh, steel. Okay, so steel and psychic. I, th I think that might be it. That's its only weakness, steel and psychic. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's uh its only weakness. This I feel like this thing's gonna be really good based on its typing with its ability. But even so, we see that question mark, question mark, question mark. So who knows what else this thing can get? All right, so let's, let's look let's look at what else we know about Galarian Weezen. It emits purified air from the tops of its head. Purified air. It consumes polluted air and poisonous gases for substance. The air and gases absorbed will have toxins removed before being spewed out again. So it's it's like opposite because there's no way the, that the original Weezen is is doing stuff like that. The toxins accumulated within Weezen's body form into concentrated poison gas clouds that leak out and drift around it. The gas is so potent that even a whiff is enough to stun and immobilize an opponent. It is Weezing's best weapon during battle. Okay, so is this a new attack? I wouldn't matter if that was a new attack. I would not matter if that was a new attack at all. But this is Galarian Weezing. I love that hat. That's all I'm going to say about this thing. Next up, we have Galarian Zigzagoon. The old home favorite. The original. Let's see. It's part dark this time. It is part dark this time. So let's see. Let's see. The free willing original species of Zigzagoon. The Zigzagoon of the Galar region move about however they like and never settle down. They're known to inhabit all areas of region, including fields, forests, even towns. There is some speculation that the zigzag movements in other regions stem from restless nature of Galarian Zigzagoon, which is considered the oldest branch of the species. It has a provocative attitude and enjoys to battle. Galarian Zigzagoon enjoys battles and will charge at people and other Pokemon in an attempt to provoke a fight. It's definitely not what this other one did. It's definitely not what the original was doing. This, but so are they like opposite? It feels it feels like Galarians might act like complete opposites of the originals. That would be that would be a nice touch. This behavior usually succeeds in starting battle with other Pokemon, but humans tend to think it's just playing or showing affection. This seems to cause Galarian Zigzagoon some frustration when people don't get angry even though it's trying to provoke them. And that is Galarian Zigzagoon. I'm starting to get the feeling that they're, they're complete opposites, like their personalities are complete opposites from their originals. That, that would be a really nice, a really nice touch if that was the case. Next up, we got the Evolve Form Galarian Linoon. It is also part dark. Pick up Gluttony is its ability. All right, let's 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 read up on this thing. Let's see. Super destructive charges. Galarian Linoon can reach up to 60 miles an hour and can deliver devastating tackles and headbutts. Now, now right there, I like how they say tackle and headbutt, but doesn't talk about you know the move that that it uses to kill everybody extreme speed 
Y'all y'all are just gonna ignore it. Y'all just gonna ignore the whole belly drum extreme speed thing that swoops it that sweeps everybody. Y'all just y'all just gonna ignore that. Okay. These attacks have enough destructive force to knock a car away. Ah, okay, I can I see it? I I, I find it hard to believe. Okay? But they can also throw Line Noon off balance if they miss. Ugh, and it, it, it we we all know how bad it feels to miss a move too. It's popular among unhappy and angry youths. Let's see. Linoon are rash and fearless. They will recklessly pick fights, even with opponents stronger than themselves. Their fearlessness, as well as their tendency to attack opponents head on, make Galari and Linoon very popular among disaffected youths of the Galar region who have nowhere to direct their frustration and anger. Okay. But does this thing still get belly drum and extreme speed? Next up, we have Obstagoon. Now, we, we all remember him from Kanto. You know how you send out your Obstagoon against, uh, against, uh, Watson's Magneton? Yeah, we, we, we all remember this Pokemon, right? Okay, clearly not, because it's new. Living in the unique environment of Galar region, some regional farms have developed unique evolutions unseen in any other region. So... This Obstacoon evolves from a Galarian Linum. So this this is a whole new, So right off the bat we're giving we're given evolutions of previous Pokemon. This this we were getting different forms, Galarian forms and evolutions. So like that, there's no telling what we're getting. There's no telling what we're getting in the future now. So this this is and, and at that they're not just exclusive to Kanto. So there's no telling we're getting anything. So let's see. Dark normal, reckless, and guts. Both very good abilities, very good offensive abilities. So let's read up on this Pokemon. Evolution spurred on by a harsh environment. The Lino of the Galar region live in harsh conditions compared to those found in other regions, with fierce competition against others of their species. Their survival instincts have been honed as a result, leading to their evolution into Obstagoon. It uses Obstruct before countering. Throw through Obstagoon is extremely combative. It seems that it doesn't often launch the first attack, so it's slow. That's what you're telling me. It's base speed of, of 50. It will taunt an opponent, gording it into attacking. When it does, Obstagoon will cross its arms and meet the oncoming attack with this obstruct move. Okay, do we have info about this? Obstagoon is incredibly. Nope. We, we need some information about this obstruct move. We definitely need some information about this obstruct. Is it, it's not like a counter, is it? We, we gotta see. I, I need more information about that move. I really do. And here we have a brand new Pokemon, more Pico. This this is the Pikachu of the region. You know, every region gotta have their own special little Pikachu. Gets us a nice little touch. Uh, let's read about this thing. Let's read about this thing. Some Pokemon can change their form often because of the effects of certain items or their own ability. Some of these form changes don't simply change the Pokemon's appearance, though. They can change its the types of its moves or even cha change its ability. Let's see. Ability is Hunger Switch. It's electric and dark type. Let's see. It always eats. <laughs> it always hungry no matter how much it eats. So Snorlax, huh? Where Pico consistently generates electricity with the sacks in its cheeks. This consumes energy, causing more Pico to be constantly hungry. Wait a second, I'm sure other Pokemon do that. I'm sure other Pokemon do that, but they're not always hungry. I'm sure there's one, at least one other Pokemon that does that. This is why more Pico is always carried around berry seeds, protecting them with care. They serve as a snack. Its appearance changes when it gets hungry. When experiencing prolonged hunger, the balance of hormones within Morpico's body changes. This causes its fur to change, color to change and triggers more aggressive and volatile behavior. The energy stored in its chi sack also changes from electric type to dark type. Really now, this that's actually a pretty decent backstory <laughs> for this thing. That's actually a pretty cool backstory for this thing. I like I like the hunger. I like the hunger form. It just it just looks I, does it change its stats when it does it too? I have too many questions. I have, I have way too many questions. Let's, let's just move on. Next up, we have new characters. This is Bead. Bead is one of your rivals who is skilled at Pokemon battles and has the pride to match. He has joined the Chim Challenge, having received his endorsement from Rose, the chairman of the Galar Pokemon region. 
While he's clearly aiming to become champion, he seems to have other objectives as well. Okay, so he has other objectives. While while he's looking, oh, oh no, with that face, he's looking a little sinister. I won't lie, he's, he's looking a little sinister. We might we might have to be careful with this guy. He, I don't know. He he just looks the way. It just 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 look at how he's looking. It's like he's plotting. So he's definitely plotting something. Up next, Marnie. Marnie is one of your rivals who has a competitive side. So right off the bat, did, are we talking her characteristic is competitive, or, or will she actually have like competitive sets? If she has competitive sets, that'll be ooh, that'll be mad fun. Together with her partner Morpico. Never man. She oh, who knows? Morpico could. Morpico, we don't know nothing about Morpico, so he could. It could have some competitive viability. We don't know yet. She aims to become the champion of the Gala region in order to accomplish a certain goal. She has many passionate fans thanks to her sense of style and calm, collected, calculated battle strategies. Okay, so she I'm I'm thinking maybe she's one of the well, maybe she's she has competitive sets. Maybe they've been looking. Maybe maybe they was looking at Pokemon Worlds and like, yo, let's we got this. We got we got this character. How insane would that be if the AI had a mad good like competitive set? They've done it before with uh, Pokemon Black and White 2 when they had you download the World Champion teams. Like they they did it before. Like they they can do it. They can do it. I, I'm, I'm hoping so. That would be mad fun. And now we have the antagonistic team. Team Yell. We finally get to see the antagonist. Let's see. Team Yell is a group of troublemakers who seem to appear wherever the gym challenge takes you and who attempt to get in your way at every opportunity. Okay, but why? They want nothing more... Okay, let's see. They want nothing more than for Marnie to become champion and they... All try to obstruct other challengers in all sorts of ways. That's kind of, that's kind of. <laughs> they will take over hotel lobbies, prevent other challengers from accessing transportation, and even shout and distract opponents during battle. Whenever Marnie battles, it seems these Team Yell grunts are quick to appear, showing their support with Marnie print towels and also horns. Okay, y'all need to calm down, relax. Oh, we got screenshots. Let's see. You'll have to face them many times during your travels. They'll try to get in your way of your gym challenges. Marnie seems to be able to get them to stop, though. They'll show up out of nowhere to cheer Marnie on. What? Are, are they clothes like that just because hers is the color scheme? Red? Red and black like that? With, with all of the... Eh? Their symbol, that that symbol, the little Y symbol looks. I gotta, I gotta say, I like that Y symbol. I, I gotta say, it's, I like, I liked it the skull symbol uh, too, for Team Skull. So, I don't know, that Y symbol looks nice to me. And the last bit of information we have is Poka Jobs. Apparently, you can leave your Pokemon in the PC and have them do odd jobs or so, and this will raise their experience. So it seems like it seems like it's something akin to like if you've played Xenoblade or Smash Brothers. You'll you just leave them doing their own thing and once they come back they'll get a bunch of experience or they'll have a bunch of experience. Uh quite a few games have done this in the past. It, it seems like it's, it seems like it seems pretty fine. It it just depends on how how well this is executed. I don't, I don't, I see nothing wrong with this at all. Just a much easier way, quicker way to train your Pokemon. So that's always nice. And I'm pretty sure that's everything. I pretty much covered everything. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. So November 15th, guys. November 15th, 2019. Three and a half months from now. Not even three and a half. Three, three and a quarter month from now. This game comes out. So I'll see you guys then. Or earlier. Or whenever, really.